Hi folks. Um, well, today I just wanted to, to chat to you about um, the, the amazing number um, of Scottish place names that you, f you find um, throughout the world. And this was something I, I, I loved really when I was doing a lot of travelling, was that um, I would come across a place name um, which was Scottish. You know, either the same name as a, as a, as a Scottish town um, or village that I would know um, or, or named after a Scottish person or, or an area of Scotland uh, and uh, as I said I really loved it but it made me think a lot because you know to put this into a bit of context just remember you know Scotland you know it is a, is a, is a small nation um, you know our population at the moment is is about five and a half million people but if you think back um, to the, the early 1700s it would have been um, I think then it was just over a million um, and even by the early 1800s it it had only really grown to uh, just over one and a half million I think um, so if you think about the, the, the immigration from Scotland that took place much of it over that period um, the 1700s, 1800s um, then you know for such a small country I, I personally feel and I'm probably a little bit biased this but you know I, I feel that we have made a sort of disproportionately large impact um, around the globe um, especially in the you know what we might term the English speaking countries um, and former countries of the British Empire, you know, certainly, and that would be kind of obvious. But also in, in, in other countries of the world, as well. Um, and, and I know this is a reflection, <clears throat> you know, of those amazing, hard-working Scots, you know, who who left this country to to find a new home uh, in the new world, um, and also that that were so involved in, in the building of the British Empire. Um, but anyway, you know, it, it's just always intrigued me. I just thought, so I just thought I, I would take a look at some of them. I mean, there's so many of them I can't uh, look at them all, but uh, some of them, j and and just see if we can tease out how it came about and things like that. And let's just, I just thought I'd start as um, June and I, um, you know, we live in Edinburgh, um, so um, let's just take a look at say, are there any other Edinburghs in the world now? I should just highlight here that the way you pronounce Edinburgh is as I'm saying it, Edinburgh, Edinburgh, and um, it's not called Edinburgh. <laughs> so, I shouldn't say that, but I do know that some places called Edinburgh are called Edinburgh. <laughs> anyway, there's a, a town, I believe, in Indiana in the United States called Edinburgh, and um, it's, uh, first settler there was a, a gentleman called John Campbell and he set up the town in 1820 and I think it has um, three historic districts now and uh, it's you know, on the US National Register of Historic Places. So there you go, that's an Edinburgh. Um, up in Canada <coughs> there's a suburb of Ottawa which is called New Edinburgh and this house is the official residence of the um, Prime Minister of Canada uh, and I think it also is uh, uh, the re where the, the residence for the Governor General of Canada is. So there you go, New Edinburgh in um, Ottawa in Canada. Um, down in Australia there's a suburb of Adelaide which is called Edinburgh which I think is home to, has, uh, home to a large um, Royal Australian Royal Australian Air Force Base um, called Edinburgh um, and then there's a this is quite a, uh, an interesting one there's, there's a, a little settlement um, called Edinburgh of the Seven Seas uh, which is on the island of Tristan de Cunha um, which is out in the South Atlantic Ocean um, and it was founded in 1816 by um, a Scottish Sergeant William Glass from Kelso, a borderer. Um, and it's regarded as being the most remote 
permanent settlement uh, on Earth, as it's 1,350 miles away from the nearest other human settlement. So it's kind of far to go to your nearest neighbour. So that was a, that's a quick look at some places that are called Edinburgh, but uh, however, add on to this, hang on a minute, the Gaelic name for Edinburgh, as many of you will know this, is Dunedin. Yep, so that's a Gaelic name for Edinburgh. So, for instance, down in New Zealand, we have the, the beautiful city of Dunedin, um, down in the South Island of New Zealand. Um, it was founded in um, 1848 by members of the Presbyterian Free Church of Scotland. Um, and it grew substantially um, because, mostly because of um, there was a, a, a gold rush nearby um, in the 1860s in New Zealand. Um, so that was a huge influx of people there. Uh, so by 1874, uh, Dunedin was briefly, I think, for about 20 years, um, New Zealand's largest city. Um, however, it is still a very important city in, in New Zealand and it hosts the, the University of Otago, uh, which is New Zealand's oldest university. And in 2014, it was uh, nominated, or uh, designated, sorry, a UNESCO City of Literature. So quite a famous city. Um, it's often called the Edinburgh of the South, I think. Um, Forgive me if I've got that wrong, people from New Zealand, you can tell me. <laughs> uh, and then over in Florida, there is a lovely little town called Dunedin um, on the Gulf Coast in Florida. Yeah. <clears throat> um, and I think it has uh, some of the finest beaches in the world there. You, uh, um, and uh, I think uh, Dunedin, Florida has, you know, it has maintained its Scottish links um, and I think every year they get lots of Scottish clans going there for um, the Dunedin Highland Games and I think they have a city of Dunedin pipe band. Um, and June and I have visited Dunedin and uh, oh, it's a beautiful little place, really enjoyed uh, our time there. Um, and if you should go to Dunedin in Florida, I think pop, a pop in and visit the Celtic shop of Dunedin um, and tell Lynn, June and Gordon were asking for her. Um, and then I think also up in Canada, in Ontario, I think there's a small hamlet called Dunedin um, up there. Um, so that, that's just a very brief look at one place you know, where I live, Edinburgh, so I could find these other Edinburghs. Um, but there's so many other um, Scottish place names around the world. Um, and as I said, they, these could be named directly after Scottish towns uh, and places but you know, also can be named uh, in honour of, of Scots men and women, um, and and you know there is going to be there's so many that I certainly can't um, talk about them all. But I just tr I'm trying to pick out various aspects of it and topics of it just to chat about to highlight it. Um, so one, for instance, is I think I think I'm right on this. There's about 30 places, apparently there's about 30 places around the world that are called Aberdeen. So they share, share the same name as, you know, Aberdeen is, is, is a famous, uh, very well-known city over on Edinburgh's east coast, um, home to uh, Scotland's oil industry, um, Aberdeen. Um, so, the, you know, 30 places around the world that, that share the same name. And that list includes um, you know, there's this lovely town called Aberdeen on the south coast of, of Hong Kong Island. If you've ever been to Hong Kong Island and done a tour around to the south, you'll see Aberdeen there, it's lovely. Um, and also in, on the, in the eastern cape of South Africa, um, there's a town called Aberdeen there. Um, and in the United States, of course, the, much bigger and better, um, there are apparently 18 towns or cities uh, called Aberdeen, which is quite amazing. Why Aberdeen should have featured so much, I don't know. It could be that many, many families from Aberdeen left and made an impact in the world. I don't know, but that one stood out to me uh, as being quite amazing um, that there were so many Aberdeens. Um, just touching on, Aber on America there, it has so many Scottish place names that I can't even begin to sort of try and list some of them. 
Um, I was just really swamped when I was looking at, uh, at reading, doing reading some books and things like that. So just a few pointers, I think, is that, you know, Gretna Green is, is quite a famous place in Scotland. That's where young couples used to run away to get married in Gretna Green, or Gretna as it's often called. Um, so it's quite well known. So apparently there, there are Gretna neighbourhoods um, in Chicago, New Orleans uh, and Omaha. So that's quite nice that you, perhaps you could run away to get married in New Orleans. <laughs> in Gretna, New Orleans. Um, and you know, the, the ancient, uh, the Roman name for, for the Scottish Highlands was Caledonia. So that's where Caledonia comes from, from a, a Roman name. And apparently it, it features in at least 16 American states have areas or places called Caledonia. Which is quite amazing, I think, as well. Um, and, and there's a massive number of, of American suburbs a huge number of American suburbs that have S Scottish place names or, or variations on Scottish place names. I mean, you just have to think of the phrase Highland Park and, and things like that. There are so many of them. Uh, and it shows you how, how popular it is. And, and, um, and you know, I just wonder where that, where that comes from, really. Um, and finally, apparently in um, America, at least 22 places <laughs> in America are called or have been called Scotland. So, you know, that I, it's just phenomenal, I think, you know, for in America. Um, but also Canada, you know, where it has a very strong Scottish influence, again has a, 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 a huge concentration of, of Scottish place names. Um, and uh, just a few of them, some of them you may have heard of. Banff, you know, a very, very well-known city in the Rocky Mountains in Alberta. So that's named after the, you know, the, the, the town in Aberdeenshire, which is quite well known in Scotland, Banff, a lovely town um, up on the coast in Aberdeenshire. So that's where Banff in the Rocky Mountains gets its name from. Um, Mount MacDonald, huge mountain in, in British Columbia, named after the Scots-born Sir John MacDonald, who was the first Prime Minister of Canada. Um, and there's in Manitoba, there's a city called Selkirk, um, which is uh, named after um, the Scotsman Thomas Douglas, who was the, the fifth Earl of Selkirk. So Selkirk in Scotland is a, is a lovely little town down in the Scottish borders, a um, beautiful little place. Um, so there's a Selkirk in Manitoba. Um, in New Brunswick, there's a town called Dumfries, which is named after Dumfries in Scotland, the famous town where um, Robbie Burns lived, um, and the one in New Brunswick was named at uh, after an early settler who had come from Dumfries. Um, there's a town in, in Labrador, Newfoundland and Labrador called Holyrood. Holyrood is, is a very important name in Scotland and, and uh, the um, Holyrood House, the, the residence of Her Majesty the Queen in Scotland is named Holyrood, after Holyrood. Um, up in the North West Territories, uh, the Mackenzie Mountains of course, a huge range of mountains and they are named after Alexander Mackenzie, um, Canada's second Prime Minister. Uh, over in Nova Scotia, obviously Nova Scotia is Latin for New Scotland, so obviously there's a huge Scottish influence there. Um, I just picked up on one, the, the, there's a, a place there called Loch Aber, and it's named after the same area in Scotland called Loch Aber, um, which is a mountainous part uh, over in the west, well it stretches uh, down really from Inverness, it's in Inverness, um, and it's where Fort William is, many of you may have visited Fort William, that's in the heart of Loch Aber, um, Ben Nevis, the highest mountain in in Scotland is in Loch Aber. So there's a Loch Aber in Nova Scotia, which is nice to know. Um, and that's because the first um, settlers in that area came from Loch Aber. Um, there's a large town in Scotland called Paisley. There was a huge mill town and renowned for that pattern. If you ever see something called the Paisley pattern, that came from Paisley in Scotland. And there is a town in Ontario called Paisley, um, which was named after the Scottish Paisley. Um, and in Quebec, there is a town called Stornoway, um, named that in 1852. 
after the, the, the town of Stornoway, which is over on the Isle of Lewis, um, on, in the Outer Hebrides of Scotland, quite a well-known uh, town for those of you who get out to the highlands and islands of Scotland. Um, and in Saskatchewan, there's a, a place called Colonsey, um, which derives its name from, from this lovely island uh, in the Inner Hebrides uh, of Scotland uh, called uh, Colonsey. And apparently the, the, the Colonsey in Saskatchewan, um, all the streets in this village are named after islands um, off the west coast of Scotland, which I thought that's a, a really nice touch. Um, yeah. So Canada, yeah, huge influence. But also, Australia, when I, when I looked, I mean, I just couldn't believe how many uh, Scottish place names there were. Um, obviously, there's Perth, which is its fourth largest city and is the capital of the state of Western Australia. So right over in the western edge of, of um, Australia, you'd find Perth, um, named after the, the city in, in Scotland, Perth. Um, there's in Victoria, there's a town called Dunkeld. Dunkeld's this beautiful little town uh, uh, in Scotland, in, in Persia, um, with a lovely little cathedral. Um, in Tasmania, there's a Campbelltown. There's a Campbelltown over in the west coast of Scotland. Um, in South Australia, there's a Stirling. As you know, there's a Stirling in the centre of Scotland uh, with the famous Stirling Castle. Um, and the scene of many famous battles. Um, uh, there's a, a town in, in Queensland called Mackay, which is uh, named after uh, John Mackay from Inverness. Um, and then they, they have this um, massive highway uh, in, in uh, what is in, uh, it runs from north to south, so it runs from the Northern Territories right all the way to South Australia. And it's called the Stuart Highway. Um, and it's, it runs for a bit over 1,700 miles. I cannot imagine a road that runs for 1,700 miles, but there you go in Australia. Um, and that was named after a man called John Stewart from Fife. Um, and the sa actually the same picture repeats itself in New Zealand. Uh, I've mentioned um, Dunedin, but New Zealand has many, many uh, place names linking it with Scotland and its Scottish heritage. Um, just a couple to mention, uh, there's a popular tourist town of Napier up in the North Island um, uh, and uh, down in the South Island apparently there's a, a small historic gold mining town called Bannockburn. So again these are well-known Scottish uh, names. But also looking further afield, South Africa has, has many, also many, many Scottish place names. Um, it has towns called Aberdeen, Dundee, Glencoe, um, Johannesburg, which is the, the largest city in South Africa and one of the largest cities in, in the continent of Africa, I think, um, bo uh, uh, has many suburbs with Scottish names, um, as does Cape Town, South Africa's second city, which is right down on, on the bottom of, of uh, South Africa, right on the coast, Cape Town. So both of those huge cities, um, you know, the main cities of South Africa, have this huge Scottish influence on in them. Um, one I thought was quite nice is um, there's a, a, a harbour town, it's a suburb of um, Cape Town, it's called um, Gordon's Bay. I quite like that. I need to go there. <laughs> I need to go and have a, a meal and a drink in Gordon's Bay, I think. Yeah. But let's look quickly further afield. Um, as I said, there's so many. I, I found this, the one thing that I found, I was keen to do this uh, video, but I found it very hard to try and summarise it. Um, but if we look, say, uh, uh, into Africa, in Malawi, um, there's a town called Blantyre, uh, and in Zambia, there's a town called Livingston, and they're both named after the famous Scottish explorer, David Livingston. And he was born in, in Blantyre, um, which is uh, in central Scotland, and was a weaving town. That's where David Livingston was from, and there's now, you know, uh, the town in, in Malawi called Blantyre. Um, in India, just picking some, I mean, there's, there's so many, but there's a, there's a town called Dalhousie in India, which is named after um, Lord Dalhousie, who was the Governor General of India. And of course, some of you may have visited in Scotland, there's a Dalhousie Castle, which is a very, very elegant uh, hotel, just on the outskirts of Edinburgh. Um, 
in the Caribbean, in, in Jamaica, I'm sure there's more, I'm sure practically all the Caribbean islands will have them, but just taking Jamaica as, uh, as a start, there are um, towns called Aberdeen, um, Culloden, Dundee and Glasgow, it, just in Jamaica alone. And, and, that's, <laughs> and, and there's many others. Um, so obviously a big impact uh, in Jamaica. Uh, over in Indonesia, uh, there's an area called Glenmore, which w was named by Scottish Highland soldiers. And um, I think Glenmore is Gaelic for uh, Big Glen, I think. Yep. Um, and in Malaysia, there's a couple of areas. One's called Cameron's Highlands and the other's called Fraser's Hill. And the Fraser's Hill in Malaysia is named after a James Fraser, would you believe it, um, who was uh, a, a Scottish trader uh, who in 1890 uh, founded a tin mine there. Uh, and I think it's now a bit of a tourist area, Fraser's Hill in Malaysia. Yep. Um, in Sri Lanka, they have a, a, an Aberdeen, another Aberdeen, a Balmoral, Caledonia, Dalhousie, uh, Glasgow, Iona, St Andrews and more um, and that shows the impact of, of probably the Scots people on the tea industry I think it probably would be in Sri Lanka I would think. Um, over in Chile uh, right down the bottom in Tier Tierra del Fuego um, there's an island called Gordon's Island hey, or Gordon Island actually it's Gordon Island. Um, in Argentina there's a small town called Nuevo Escocia which is again New Scotland. Um, there's quite a few New Scotlands uh, dotted around the place. Um, uh, so this was established in 1888 um, after a Scottish immigrant who, who settled there and he established a pottery factory. And the, apparently the chimney of the factory is still standing uh, after all this time. Nuevo Escocia in Argentina. Um, so a nice lovely link to, uh, for Argentina. Um, and even actually to the South Pole, uh, the South Pole, there are a number of, of, of locations in South Pole that, that bear Scottish names. Just a couple of them I picked was Ailsa Craig. Um, Ailsa Craig is an island off the west coast of Scotland. Um, just uh, if you were staying at, at Turnbury Hotel at, um, would you see it? Yeah, you would see it from there. Um, Killeen Castle, you would see, I think you see Ailsa Craig from there. It's quite famous for where all the curling stones came from, if you're interested in the, hist the sport of curling. Oh nice. Um, Ailsa Craig, uh, and also there's a Dundee Island in Antarctica as well, uh, and of course um, Scott's ship uh, that went, the ship that took uh, Scott to the Antarctic was, came from Dundee and had a Dundee skipper on it. Yep. So that's just a brief look at this this amazing thing of all these Scottish place names around the world. I'm sure you'll be able to tell me more and I look forward to getting your comments because I've probably missed some very, very important ones. Um, but I, d I did think that this, this astonishing number you know, of place names all around the world that, that have a, a direct or an indirect connection with Scotland or, or with Scottish people, I think is, is an enduring legacy um, of the major contribution that uh, Scots men and women and their descendants, you know, made to, to the, the, the successful new societies that they helped to forge, you know, all around the globe. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. another little insight into a historical aspect of Scotland uh, and the impact around the world. Um, if you do, please like it, tell your friends. Um, if you want to share this in some way or other, that would be great. I was keen for as many people as possible to, to get a chance to see it. Um, but until we meet again, I just want to wish you all the very best from Scotland. <laughs>